So in the next few videos, we're going to look at principal component analysis, which is a very, very popular dimensionality reduction technique. Um, it's quite simple to use. It uh, specifically uses linear projections um, of the data. And it's quite a useful technique to understand because it's often used as a basis for understanding more advanced dimensionality reduction techniques. So in principal components analysis, we perform dimensionality reduction by performing a linear projection of, um, of the data. So for instance, here we've got two figures. Uh, on this side, we've got a two-dimensional uh, data set. On this side, we've got a three-dimensional data set. And so for instance, what we might want to do is in the two-dimensional case where we've got uh, our input data in two dimensions, you might want to reduce the dimensionality and get um, new representations, which is just in, uh, in one dimension. Or in the 3D case, we might have data that uh, has three dimensional feature vectors, and we might want to um, project that to new representation, which is maybe just um, two dimensional. You could also do one dimensions in this case. So how would you do this with linear projections? Um, let's look at the 2D case first. So what we could do is we could choose a line in this two dimensional space, maybe the line running somewhere here. Okay. And then what we could do is we could just project each of the data points onto this line. Uh, kind of an orthogonal way. So the data point here, for instance, we could map that onto this line like this. Um, maybe this data point here would be mapped onto the line like this and so on. Each of the points just mapped onto, onto that line. Okay. And then if we just look at that line in isolation, and let's say zero is around here, then each of the data points in my data set will be replaced by its corresponding value, basically where it lies on, on this line. So if that's um, zero, zero, we, for example, for this data point, we just look at this length here, and this data point then gets replaced by the point here. So on the line at the bottom, maybe that lies um, around there. Uh, let's just make the line a little bit longer. That's ugly. Let's try again. Okay. Um, this data point here, for instance, will take that uh, length there. So that data point might land here. Um, this data point might land somewhere here. Okay. And you do this for all the data points in your data set. So you basically get all these points projected onto this line. And what that means is that each of the data points originally to represent this data point, I had to have two features, right? I have a X1 and a X2 for that data point. But now instead of having two values to describe this specific data point, I only have one value, basically that length there. So if this is Xn here, yeah, then this is Zn. So for the nth data point, we're just representing it by that, uh, by that length. In a similar way, if we wanted to uh, reduce the dimensionality of a 3D data set by using linear projections, we could maybe just use a line somewhere in this three-dimensional space and then project each of the points just orthogonally onto that line, okay? And then that, that would mean that we're reducing the dimensionality of that data set from three dimensions to one dimension. If we wanted to reduce it to two dimensions, that means that we're basically going to use a plane in this 3D space. So in that case, maybe we decide we have a plane, I don't know, looking something like this. And then what we do again is we linearly project all of the data points onto this plane. So for example, this data point here, we might project it up to the plane and it lands um, somewhere there. So that then becomes this point here becomes the new representation for this point at the bottom here. And again, you do that with all the data points. So why does that help us? Well, what you can then do is you can say, let's just look at this green plane. So maybe it lies somewhere here. Uh, originally, we had a X1. Uh, a x2 and a x3, but now we will just have two dimensions 
um, maybe a Z1 dimension and a Z2 dimension. And that um, black dot here, basically in this two-dimensional space, might be somewhere here. Okay, And that represents the mapping from this three-dimensional data point just to two dimensions. So this point was originally represented with three feature values, so x1, x2, x3, but now it's just represented by these two values, a z1 and a z2. So you can extend this idea of linear projections to arbitrary dimensions. So for example, we could take a data set that has 100 dimensions and then reduce that to uh, a data set with three dimensions. And it works in a similar way where you use linear projections. It's of course hard to visualize a plane in um, higher dimensions, like 50 dimensions or something. Um, but it works in the, in the same way where you basically take linear combinations of your features. Now the question is, of course, um, I just drew this green plane and this green line, but we need to learn this in some way. And when we do this linear projection, when we do dimensionality reduction, we're always throwing away some information. And the question is, how do we, pre we preserve the interesting information in the original data? We need to define some loss function to do that. Um, and that means we need some quantitative way to say like how interesting a specific, how good is a specific projection. And principal components analysis, um, or just PCA, um, there's actually more than one way to look at how it, um, it does that, how it defines like interestingness, if you want to think about it like this. And what I will do is I will t talk about both views. They're actually, um, they lead to the same solution, and I'll show that in a follow-up video. But in this video, I'll just talk about the two views, the two ways of interpreting how PCA decides where to maybe put this line or where to put this plane. So the first view is that PCA maximizes variance. Okay, and here I'll, I'll use an example to illustrate um, what that means. So you have got um, the same data set on, on, on these two sides, and I've used two different lines to project uh, the data set. So um, on the left-hand side, we've got a line running somewhere here, okay? And I've projected all the points onto that line. So again, that point gets projected there, this point gets projected there, and so on. This one gets projected there. Um, on the right hand side, I've got a line running here. Okay, so this is a different line. Same principle, we're going to project things linearly. So that point here gets uh, mapped there and this point here gets mapped there. Okay, so both of them use linear projections, but they actually do it in quite a different way. So which one of these um, is a better projection? Let's just think about this. So if I drew a line here, uh, which represents um, basically my projection onto this, uh, onto the line above it, um, then it means that the data here will um, probably fall, I don't know, from here, you'll have a whole bunch of dots, right? And like I explained on the previous slide, each of my data points gets now gets replaced by basically its projection onto this line. Okay, so we will have dots running from here, Okay, I realize this is super ugly, but you get the point, right? I'm just replicating the points here onto this line here, okay? Um, on the right-hand side, something similar will happen if this is our um, projection, then you will have points, but in contrast to the left-hand side, our points will be more concentrated, right? So we will have points here, yeah, yeah. Now what we can do is, I can I actually did this, you can calculate the sample variance, right? You can look at the spread, uh, in this case, of the data around the zero point. And in this case as well, you can look at the spread of the data around the zero point. And if I look at the sample variance in these two cases, so the sample variance um, projecting onto Z, in this case, it's uh, 0 0.94. Uh, nine three, and in this case the sample variance is around zero point one zero one seven. Okay, so these are two data sets. They've both been projected in a linear way, but the result actually looks quite different. Okay, the spread here is a lot more than here.
And the argument is basically that this projection captures or retains a lot more of the information from the original data set than this one. So you can think of variance as a proxy for capturing interest, right? How interesting is, is my data and do I retain the interesting parts of the data? Okay, and PCA actually, the solution given by PCA actually maximizes variance. So actually this is the, the, the one dimensional solution that's given by principal components analysis on this data set. Let's look at a different um, data set, but again, looking at what happens when we project it in two different ways. So here on the left hand side, I've got a line running somewhere here. And on the right hand side, I've got a line running. Yeah. Okay. The data actually looks quite different from, from before. Okay. But we're still doing uh, linear projections. Okay. Um, so for example, I don't know, this point here gets down, mapped down here, there, and this point there gets mapped um, orthogonally down there. Okay. And again, if you look at the um, sample variance, just this kind of one dimensional spread on this projection, then on the left hand side, you get a sample variance of um, 4.3187. And on the left hand side, 0 0.7331. Okay. And now if you look at the two lines in this case, um, if you just looked at that um, green line here and you looked at the orange projections, then you can still actually see that there's one cluster here and one cluster here. And on that line, you will still capture that you've got a bunch of points landing there and a bunch of points landing there. But if you um, rather chose this projection, then all of the points are just bunched together and you actually lose the structure of the clustering. And again, we see that actually the sample variance gives a good proxy for capturing that, um, that cluster structure. So this is the first view of what PCA does. It finds projections that retains the variance in the data. The second view is that PCA minimizes the reconstruction error. And I just want to emphasize again, this view leads to exactly the same solution um, as the first view. It's just a different way of, of looking at PCA. Each of our data points is going to be projected onto a line or in the high dimensional case onto a surface. And we can think about this as actually doing some form of um, compression. So for example, the data point here is going to be mapped onto uh, the line there, okay? And this, that point there, is actually some um, approximation of your original data point. If this point is xn, then you can think of that point there as an approximation to xn. Um, this point here will be approximated by that point there, that point, uh, this point here will be approximated by that point there. Similarly, in the higher dimensional case, this point here, for example, will now be uh, represented by this approximation on this plane here. And the second view of PCA is basically a view where we're finding the line which um, has the smallest reconstruction error. In other words, if I add up the square distances, these red lines for all of my data points, for all of these points, then PCA finds the line which gives you the, um, the lowest reconstruction error averaged over all of the data points. Similarly, in the higher dimensional case, each of the data points are now repl uh, replaced with its, with its approximation, and you will have a whole bunch of errors, right? So this point might be mapped there, and you'll, you'll have that error. So you'll have a whole bunch of red lines if you wanted to draw it in for all of the um, points. And PCA will find the plane this, um, this green plane that minimizes the reconstruction error. Okay, so it will minimize the sum of the squares of all of the red lines uh, if you did project the points onto this plane. So my green plane is obviously very ugly. So on the next slide, I actually show uh, the result of applying PCA to this three dimensional data set. So this is actually the plane it finds. Um, both of these plots 
contain the same data set. I just um, tilted the view a little bit. So you can see that um, this is the plane. And if we rotate uh, the view, then you can see that um, the data points basically actually lies pretty close to this plane. And what PCA did was it found the plane where if you add up all the distances of all the, di the different data points onto this plane, if you add all of them up, it found the plane that gives you the lowest um, um, loss, uh, the lowest squared loss. So I've described two interpretations of what principal components analysis do. Uh, we haven't talked about how you would actually implement an algorithm to find uh, the projections, um, but that's what we'll look at in detail in the next videos.